An open source library for building AI powered user interfaces, or in simpler terms, a bunch of utilities to make building apps using your favorite LLM APIs, like the OpenAI API for example, a lot easier. That's the new Vercel AI SDK. This thing is getting a lot of hype and for good reasons. I want to show you how quickly you can create a ChatGPT clone using Next.js that's streaming all the messages as they come in. Streaming is actually one of those things that's a bit of work to get set up properly, but with the SDK it's already handled for us. We'll be using the OpenAI Chat Completions API and we'll also take a look at using the GPT-4 Vision Preview model which allows us to pass images as input and for the model to answer questions about it. At the end, I'll also share a way I've found to easily log all the requests that we make which can be really helpful for not only the cost and usage tracking but also for debugging purposes. In terms of setup, first we just need to create a base Next.js app by doing pnpm dlx create next app for cell AI SDK and that's just the name of the app. We'll then open up the project and install the new dependencies we want, which are the AI and OpenAI packages. And before we start to code, we also need to generate the new OpenAI API key and add it to our .env file. To get started, we can create our first route handler to handle the requests coming for our client. This will just be in the app slash API slash chat slash route.ts file and accept a post request. Here we import OpenAI from OpenAI, import the SDK utils, OpenAI stream and streaming text response from AI. We then create the OpenAI client and next Next, we'll set up the runtime to be edge so that we can cut down a bit on the request latency. For the route itself, grab the messages from the request body, which is a history of all the messages from the conversation, including the one that was just submitted. Now we can make our request to the API by awaiting the OpenAI chat completions to create the function. And in here, we will pass the GPT 3.5 turbo model, make sure streaming is also enabled, and also the messages that we got passed in. But now we have to convert the response into a friendly text stream using the OpenAI stream util that we we imported. This will decode and extract the text tokens in the response and then re-encode them properly for simple consumption by the other utils. Now we can just return the new streaming text response passing in the stream that we just created. This extends the normal response class by adding the necessary headers for us. Before we can test this, we'll quickly just set up the UI for it. We'll create a chat folder in our app folder and then a page.tsx. This is so we can create different pages for the UIs that we're building. And to get started, we'll have use client at the top, then import from the SDK, the use chat hook. This hook actually provides us some useful things like the history of our messages, the current value of our input, and just handlers for the input change and the form submit. For the return, we'll simply just have a block where we loop through all the messages and based on the role determine if it was by us or by the AI. This will simply just create the chat bubbles. I also created a very simple chat bubble component for that just to format them nicely. The form is what will have our input box and this is where we'll use the submit handler. Since this is a chat app, we'll also need an input box for our form and this is simply where we put our prompt. We're now finally ready to try out the application and we can do this by running npm run dev and by going to localhost 3000 slash chat. The UI is pretty basic, nothing fancy here, but we can try this out by typing out what is a post request for and the response will be streamed in as opposed to waiting for the whole thing to process and then return the full response. That was pretty simple to set up and since we're keeping track of messages, it should have a context of what we're asking. So we can ask something like, what was my previous question? which will actually return the question that we asked before. With the GPT-4 vision model, there's not many differences in code between this and our chat example that we just did. So we'll simply just copy our code into its own API route and page for vision. And on the front end, not much change. The difference here is that the submit handler will now pass in the extra data property, which will hold the URL of the image that we're providing. And for our example, this is just a simple image of a sparrow. With the use chat hook, you can also provide a specific API route you want to hit, which in our case is the slash API slash vision. The backend will require a change to the model that we use. We'll now use the GPT-4 vision preview model. We'll also set a max tokens amount to 150 since we don't want to spend a crazy amount. But for the messages, this is where we have to craft things a little bit. The messages that come with the request, we can slice that array and grab all the messages up to the new one and then also spread those into a new array. But for the current message, which will be the last one in the list, we need to extract the content and then pass in the extra information regarding the image, which is just the image URL of the actual image. The rest is all the same. To test this, we can just ask it something like, what does this image show? Which will just describe the Sparrow image to us. Another thing that the guy they have on the website touches on is handling errors. And to make our app a bit more robust, we can just wrap our post route in a try and catch. When an error is caught, we check if it's an OpenAI API error, in which case we would extract the value 
piece from the error and return a new response. Otherwise, we can just throw the error again since this is most likely our app just being broken. I won't go into this next part of the tutorial because I want to show you a faster and easier way, but the OpenAI stream util also provides us with some very useful hooks. We can have the code trigger whenever the stream starts. The example shows you can use this to save your prompt to the database. Another trigger for each token being streamed. This is useful for something like debugging. And lastly, a trigger on completion for when the stream finishes if you're looking to save your completion to the database. All of these are useful hooks that offer you flexibility, which is exactly what you want out of an SDK like this. And now to the fun part, I could have added a database to track my request to the OpenAI API, including tokens, prompts, and responses, but I came across this platform that promises to track everything for me all in one place, which is pretty nice. It seems like there are still pretty early days, and I think there's other more complete competitors out there like Langsmith, but for what I need here, I was surprised by how easy it is to set up Montello. Their free tier is also pretty generous and they're open source, which I found a big positive in this space. To get started, all I had to do was PNPM install Montello, sign up on their website, and then also create a new project. They have a section for API keys, which I just took and then added to my .env file. And from reading through the docs, it looks like as long as you have both your Montello key and your OpenAI key in your .env, you can just instantiate their client and it'll also set up your OpenAI client. Now, where I was doing OpenAI.chat.completions, I just need to prefix that with Montello dot. So now it'll just be Montello dot OpenAI dot chat dot completions. It will also need a name property for the log that will be created. But now if I go back to the chat UI and I have a conversation with the bot, having a few back and forths about Vercel and Next.js, I can see that the logs of all these conversations were actually successfully logged. This was pretty nice because it didn't take me long to set up and now I can see all this information nicely formatted. It's good to see the cost breakdown, the tokens, how long my request took, but also all the input and the output. All of this is really good information for debugging as well. If you guys are interested in checking out the documentation of either Vercel AI SDK or Montello, links are in the description. And yeah, make sure to like the video and subscribe for more content like this. And until next time.